Good morning, everyone. Very good morning to everyone. Welcome to the webinar series, uh, or the, the, the webinar session, the workplace of the future and, and activity-based working. Um, we're just giving uh, a few 30 seconds or a minute or so for more people to join, and we'll, we'll be with you shortly, but very welcome to everyone. Okay, I think uh, I think it's a good time to start. Great. Here we go. Hi, Hi everyone. Uh, good morning. Very welcome to to this webinar. Um, uh, Georgie and I are very excited uh, to have the session with with everyone to, today who's joined. Um, very very excited about the topic as well, and keen to get started. Keen to get going. Um, I can still see more. And more joining as we um, as we as we proceed but I think let's uh, let's kick off uh, without uh, any other uh, any other delays and um, and with uh, without further ado let me let me get going uh, welcome to this webinar around uh, with the subject uh, activity based working and um, and what I'd like to do is just show everyone uh, a quick agenda of today uh, which will be a quick introduction of ourselves uh, then a, a discussion into activity-based working, a presentation around what activity-based working is, um, followed by benefits and key success factors around technology, uh, followed, by some, uh, followed by some questions and Q&A. Um, this by myself and Georgie, uh, who's, uh, who's, who's joined the session. And um, let me start off by, by telling you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm the MD for Catalyst. Catalyst is a business that's passionate about driving business uh, forward through smart technology. Um, we are 100% South African, and our goal is really to help companies create workspaces that encourage employee engagement. Uh, also, that supports supports business productivity um, and help with the with the, with with right sizing of real estate. Um, that that also helps to optimize the management of, of facilities. So you'll, so you'll note and you'll see as we proceed that uh, from a catalyst point of view, our approach is that of a collaborative approach. Uh, we believe in planning and designing uh, with, with, uh, with all the stakeholders and business involved, but our approach is technology focused. So uh, we are passionate about workspace management technology that, uh, that supports the business initiatives like the one we are discussing today. So, um, yeah, Georgie, uh, over to you. I think uh, let's uh, let's let's uh, tell the people a little bit about yourself and about uh, your business. Thanks, Johan. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Georgie Channels. I'm the founder of Space Sense Workplace Consultancy. Um, I've been helping clients realize strategic and design projects for many years, um, having worked in various industries and with leading brands across the spectrum, from large global financial companies to large insurers to oil and gas companies, to name a few as well as smaller businesses. Um, what really drives me is making workplaces work. I really believe that the workplace can be a powerful asset to any business, but the trick is really to integrate it into your culture and to make it work for you. So through Space Sense, I help organizations to understand and optimize their workplaces um, by providing strategic support and also change management support. So essentially, what we're about is making workplaces actually work. 
Fantastic. I mean, uh, that's that's an introduction for everyone about ourselves. And I think just before we get going, if it's fine with you, should I should I launch a question for everyone to quickly just a one question poll uh, for everyone to, to to look at and and just around activity based working. So um, if everyone looks on the screen now, if you can look on the screen, you should see a, a poll that I've just launched. Um, it's just to gauge an understanding uh, around your your understanding of. Do you know what activity-based working is? And uh, yeah, please make your selection. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I've been chatting to people lately and it's, it's something that's quite mainstream and maybe other, other places um, in the UK and the US, but activity-based working, the, the term, um, it's, not, it's not that well known here, although we, we're seeing many aspects of it being being used in our workplaces here. So it's, I wouldn't say it's totally foreign. So I'm really fascinated mm. to hear um, what our audience is, where our audience is in terms of understanding and um, yeah, how much, yeah, how much mean, they're looking for. I, I agree. Stuff. Yeah, I agree with activity-based working. I've heard the term a lot. And and in, in, this, in the real estate circles that I, that I work in as well, I've heard the term, but often you think you know what it means, but do you really know what it means? <laughs> so. So it'll be interesting, and I think that's probably enough time. Uh, let me let me present the poll for everyone. I think it's it'll be very, uh, very, very interesting to see. And let me share the results for everyone, as you can see on screen. Um, I hope you can see it. Sharing the poll results out of all the answers, you'll see 22% uh, know what it is, 48% uh, are keen to learn, and and 30% are not sure. So uh, that's very very cool to see. Great. Um, so I think yeah. most people are looking to find out more. That's great. <laughs> yes. And I'm glad yeah. to hear that some people are familiar with it and I understand it. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so I think so what I'm I'll, I'll, I'll yeah yeah I'll stop sharing and I'll hand over to you. Great. So give me a second. Um, okay. Can you all see? I'm trying to find my my share button. Excuse me. There we go. All right. I'm just going to hide this poll. There we um, go. So, so to begin talking about activity-based working, I want to just take us back a little bit um, and just to sort of set the context of, of where we are in terms of the evolution of the workplace. Um, you might be surprised to hear that activity-based working has been around for about 20 years. <laughs> um, it's mainstream in the, the UK government has been using it since the early 2000s. Um, many companies in South Africa um, have been using forms of it, um, but generally it's not, I wouldn't say it's widespread in South Africa, um, although we work as a great advocate of it and they've got a lot of material on their website about it. Um, but just setting the context, um, you can all recognize this, this picture of this factory of office clerks, um, maybe 60, 80 years ago, um, we thankfully we've evolved the workplace since then um, and we've seen a lot of progress in how workers uh, how, how work has evolved and to meet the needs of new work new space has evolved um, so on the right here you can see the Johnson Wax Company it's quite a, a well-known revolutionary workplace of its time back in I think it was about the 50s or 60s um, yeah and then later on we saw um, a little bit more friendliness in the workplace, the scale being broken down a bit. Um, and then later in the 80s and 90s, we started to see uh, the equipment that, that was coming into play, computers and telephones taking up huge amounts of desk space and people really were tied to their desks back then. Thankfully, things have changed. Um, and by the early 2000s, uh, computers had become a lot smaller, more mobile, mobile phones were commonplace. Um, and, and we've become a lot less tethered to our desks as time has gone on. Even before COVID, we were seeing workplaces become much more open and activity-based working, as I said, has been around for many years. Um, yeah, and, and I think especially you would have seen how tech companies have really embraced and led the charge when it comes to brave new workplace concepts. Um, so this image on the right that you can see, I mean, just look at this workplace. People can still be at work and collaborating, developing ideas, discussing issues and blockages on their projects, whatever it might be, but they don't need to be sitting at a desk. Something also to note is that in recent years, studies have shown over and over again that in most office, offices, there's been an average desk occupancy of 60 to 70%. So in other words, at any time in the office, on average, 
only 60% or 70% of your desks have been used, which means that there's a whole lot of space not being used. So activity-based working partly seeks to actually meet the exact needs by having flexibility, um, sharing of spaces so that you're actually, you have the right amount of, of space and facilities for what you need. And looking, going back to this idea of the evolution, we're at a point in time, it's really exciting. We don't know um, where exactly it's gonna go uh, in terms of the detail, but if you look around at what's happening, um, Google has invested in the last year or so at a massive office at King's Cross in London. I mean, people are talking about the death of the workplace and we've got a city block size office springing up in London, um, thanks to Google, which has kitted out with everything to support a healthy social employee experience. I mean, they even have a shared composting area. I mean, how cool is that? I think it's awesome. <laughs> um, and then something we all know so well is working from home and how that has also become very much um, commonplace and, and integrated into the way that we work today. Yeah, I think the work from home is one topic that everybody has, and I think a year ago, everybody would have said work from home. Okay, yeah, that's, I can think of one or two people maybe, but. Uh, I think recently that's uh, probably made a big, a big change in the workplace. Yeah, we've all got an opinion on it. We've all experienced it. So yeah, going back to this evolution, um, things are changing. Um, and I've highlighted just a couple of changes that we're seeing, sort of themes. Um, so if you think about it, mobile working and greater connectivity are actually driving the ability of employees not to be tied to one space. So your work is no longer about where I go, but it's actually about what you do, what you deliver, your, your value that you bring in, your role in your organization and your team. Also, more and more research is showing the value of personal autonomy in the workplace. So as well as the business benefits of having a diverse workforce, um, individual choice and in how and where work gets done has been shown to have really positive benefits for mental health and wellness in the workplace, as well as engagement. And I think especially post COVID, we're gonna see a lot of um, high levels of anxiety and fear as people return to the office um, and people coming back into the workplace and into circulation into shared workplaces. So it's important to give people the autonomy to choose to find places that are comfortable for them where they feel safe, where they feel they can actually um, perform their work. So really a great employee experience, if you think about it, isn't just about a blanket one size fits all. Um, as it may have been in the past, but it's more, it's more of a recognition of diversity. Um, it's about trust in the employees and it's about giving them individual choice around their workplace and their everyday work decisions. And then lastly, our work is changing. Um, so where in the past we might've had booked and closed meeting rooms, we're now working a lot more fluidly um, things are moving at a different pace. Um, there's a lot more team-based and more collaborative work and multidisciplinary work um, more than there's ever been in general in, in, um, in companies. So that's affecting, you know, how we work, how we collaborate together. Um, and it's affecting the way that we see our working together, acceptable ways of working, really. Um, so, you know, various different forms of teams. Um, you, might, you might have a team that you get together with every morning. Um, you might have a, a multidisciplinary team from different people across the business that you meet in maybe more formal um, spaces. Um, or maybe more brainstorm and sort of collaborative spaces. But depending on what you're doing, you might, um, you, you might need a different space. And there's a recognition of um, people coming together and working together these days. It isn't just about a meeting room with a big table and a presentation board. Um, so, so there's more variety of spaces and settings in, our, um, in the way that we work and our expectations of the workplace today. So this brings me to the subject that we came here for today, activity-based working. So think about your activities in the workplace. Here's a question for you. Think of all the tasks and the activities that you undertake as part of your work on a day-to-day -day basis. So depending on what you do, you'll probably engage in some or all of these that I've shown on the screen. You might be collaborating, you might um, need to do focused work, uh, you might be doing a lot of phone calls or VCs. You're probably doing many of them if you're working from home at the moment. Um, there might be, you might be doing the occasional presentation internally to your team, um, to, the, to the business or, or externally to clients or customers. So this is the sort of, this is really where activity-based working comes from. It's about recognizing that there are different tasks that are performed during the day. Um, and it's about matching the right 
settings and spaces to those tasks. Also, another thing is think about your work from home experience. Did you sit at your desk all day or your kitchen counter? You probably moved around a bit. You probably went and sat on the couch for a bit, um, you know, when you were doing one activity or you got tired of sitting in that particular position and you went for a little walk around. You might have gone to the fridge. <laughs> um, but even in your work from home experience, you probably experienced a variety of settings um, without even thinking about it, but you've just naturally chosen different settings through your day and through your different tasks. So I'm gonna just show you a couple of um, images of the kinds of spaces that, um, that we're talking about that really speak to the different tasks that we do. So here's a set of workstations with a collaboration space nearby. You can see that it's very close and accessible to the people. So these two women can very easily shift over and have an engaged conversation at the table with others as well, perhaps, and use that display board if needs be. Here are two forms of gathering spaces. You can see, you can get together with your team in different ways. On your left, you've got your more traditional meeting room, um, a table with a screen, which is still really valuable. Um, and then on the right, you've got uh, more of a breakaway um, touchdown space that you might use more spontaneously with your team. Um, it's got sort of plug and play tech that you can very easily um, connect to the screen, connect to the internet from there. And it's also really, if you look at it, what I quite like about this is that it's just off the main circulation concourse. So this idea of easy access to the facilities you need has been brought into, um, into the design here as well. Here's another simple space that's just set up for people to, to display and discuss. Really simple, close to the desks. Um, doesn't have all the tech, this particular one, but you can see just the, the, the power of just having close to where you are. You can step away. It might be your daily stand-up meeting. You can display your project progress um, and your plans and, and your different um, uh, yeah, material that you need. Um, really simple and can really make a big difference in the office. Also, just thinking about private spaces and um, think about when you need to make a phone call, you want to do some focused work, acoustic and visual privacy uh, really makes a difference. And then something that's going to be important in our workplaces going forward is when we come back to the office, spaces that gently support conversation and connection. Um, you know, those social bonds that can't be replicated on Zoom, those are also going to be really important spaces in our, in our workplaces going forward. So to bring you to the definition, the sort of official definition of activity-based working, this is the one we use. Um, activity-based working is a way of working in which employees make shared use of a diversity of work settings that have been designed to support different kinds of activities. It's essentially a strategy for a more collaborative and dynamic workplace. It involves, oh, <laughs> um, I've got some animations going on here. It involves your, your space. It involves your people and it involves your processes. Um, and these are all integrated. These all, um, sorry, <laughs> these are all integrated together. They all work together as part of your business. Um, so when we talk about your people, we're talking about your teams, their functionalities, um, which team works with which, who needs to be where, what, um, near to who, and who needs to be near what amenities. Um, we're also looking at your sort of working culture and behaviors um, and how many people you have. That's also really important when you're making your decisions on your space. When we talk about your place, we start to talk about that diversity of settings. So thinking of everything from desks to focus areas to various types of group spaces, um, small meeting rooms, big meeting rooms, um, ad hoc sort of spots, and even training rooms and, and cafeterias and foyer areas. All of those spaces are the sorts of things we think about um, that are part of the workplace. Um, and also part of place is this er the idea of ergonomics. So not just your chair, um, many of us think of ergonomics as the sort of height of your chair um, and your desk set up and all your elbows at 90 degrees, um, but it's a lot more than that. It's your actual surrounding work environment um, and how it supports you in actually being able to focus and, and do, do what you need to do. So it's about air, natural light, um, accessibility, acoustics, visuals, and that sort of thing. Yeah, and then lastly, your processes, which is really how everything comes together. Um, so it's your tools and systems that are in place and your policies that enable work to happen. So, you know, your Wi-Fi and your inter internet infrastructure might be part of it, your space management and your um, room booking might be part of it, but also your sort of protocols, your HR policies, 
um, and your policies around the workplace and your sort of ways of your acceptable ways of working together. Something that uh, I want to just clear up any confusion. Um, Activity-based working is not about hot desking, <laughs> as many people think. Um, it's not an interior design concept, um, and it's not a cost-cutting exercise, and it's not a formula either that can just be applied. So while it may involve hot desking, um, we like to, we prefer to call it unassigned seating, um, and it may involve interior design, um, and it may also save you money, um, there's definitely, it's not, a, it's not a template that you apply. Um, and this, what you're seeing here is slightly more reductionist thinking. So think of it more of, as a holistic strategy for your workplace. Yeah, I'm almost, if I can, 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 can say something, I, I can almost see uh, a puzzle piece and you've got various uh, pieces of puzzles that fits together. At the end of the day, activity-based working would be the puzzle that you're building at the end of the day to get the whole picture and to get the approach and the strategy and to have an efficient uh, workspace uh, uh, approach. And all those are puzzle pieces into, 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 the, into the strategy uh, of activity-based working or the approach of it, if, I, if, if I'm correct. Absolutely. You can't have one without the other. They all work together to make up the whole. Yeah, I like that, the puzzle. Um, just, and also just, um, you're probably thinking, you might be thinking at this point, yeah, activity-based working is all great, but you know, we're not talking about office settings anymore. We've got working from home and I'm working in a co-working space twice a week or, um, you know, I've got other places that I work, not just the office. Um, so if you think about it, these different spaces that you work, um, home, the third space, they're all simply other places, other settings where work can take place. So activity-based working, thinking about it, that this concept is actually a really helpful way for us to start to think about the new way of working post COVID. Um, it's about being physically mobile. It's about a mindset that means you're not tethered to one place. Um, you can carry out your activities in many different places, um, you know, depending on what you need, what, what works for you. So it's about giving people autonomy to decide where to carry out the activities. Okay. There are some great benefits to activity-based working. There's been a lot of research. Um, you can go dig further. There's a, there's a huge amount of um, research around activity-based working and, and how it can really improve your um, engagement of your workforce. Often it can save you space um, and it really helps with organizational agility, which we're seeing, or we, we're recognizing as more and more important in our, in our workplaces. Here's a great fact um, around flexibility and collaboration. 69% of employees say that a flexible workplace helps them to collaborate better than a non-flexible workplace. So when I talk about the flexible workplace, it's about this autonomy choice. Um, and that's from a 2019 report um, from the British Council of Officers. So it was a thorough investigation. So really, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the organizational and the individual benefits um, of activity-based working. Um, there's, obvious, there's seemingly obvious financial incentive for adopting it because it allows organizations to make better use of their space um, through using less of it in theory, although that's not necessarily the case. Um, you might reduce your number of desks because you're using desk sharing, but you will also be adding more other diverse settings. So just bear that in mind. And really every, every um, organization is different. So it, it may save you space um, but also it's, it definitely will improve your organizational performance and productivity. So there's definitely wins in that regard as well. So you can have a possible reduced occupancy cost and with that also a smaller environmental footprint, increased flexibility in your organization. Um, you'll have better interactions across your teams as your people, um, as your collaborative spaces and people's um, license to be autonomous really becomes um, a part of a part of organizational culture. Um, you'll have a potential improvement in staff performance, again linked to the above, um, and the individual empowerment that plays out at an organizational level from empowering so many people um, en masse in your workforce. And then generally you're going to have great support for cultural change. So as collaboration and recognition of diversity becomes embedded in your culture, you'll start to see the benefits of that too. 
And then on the employee side, um, so I told you about the sort of high organizational level, and I'm going to tell you what it's like, um, how it can benefit actual individual employees. So, oh, hang on, I was going to first tell you about the facts. <laughs> yeah, more research, you know, 13% um, greater performance, 15% greater communication, 18% greater collaboration, and 10% increased creativity um, have been shown, you know, these are the kinds of results we're talking about from, from transitioning to activity-based working. So on the employee level, all of these um, changes help your people to feel more empowered, make the best choice for their own work and their own situations, um, and enjoy actually better functioning environments. So you're giving people more autonomy and choosing where to work, more choice and variety in their settings, a less sedentary, healthier work style, and also very important, more, more authentic contact with their colleagues. So with this idea of sharing, with the idea of working more together um, in this, as, as a culture, um, getting rid of those corner offices, getting rid of this, this person has this particular desk by the window with that view every day. Um, by removing those hierarchical differences, um, you're gonna have a much more, um, integrated, um, yeah, well, engaged workforce who, who are going to come and bring their more authentic selves to work. Um, and they will also, of course, being, be enjoying better functioning workplaces that are actually suited to the tasks that, that need to be done. So how to make this all work in your own organization? Um, this diagram, I hope it doesn't intimidate anyone. Um, the idea is that your workplace is a living ecosystem um, and it's constantly evolving so as I showed you you know things don't just happen this is a this is a long journey of evolution um, and those three key factors that I took you through earlier people place and process they all work together you cannot have one without the other um, so if you're going to make any changes you need to change the whole system holistically it's very possible to break down the changes you know it doesn't have to be a big complicated process um, but it can really um, they, they all need to work together. You need to plan this into your strategy. So, um, yeah, think about it holistically. Um, I'll give you an example. So if you're going to change your physical space to have fewer desks and more diverse settings, you'll need some sort of protocol to set up for your people so they know where to sit, um, how they're going to manage sharing desks and sharing spaces and booking rooms when they need them. Um, so you're going to need those processes and systems to support the people using those spaces. So while you make it, might make a change to your space, you know, it's useless changing your space to have all this diverse settings and fewer desks. If your people aren't on board, they haven't integrated um, this new way of working into their, their actual culture activities and behaviors. And, and they're gonna need to have the support that actually allows them to, to function, to book things, um, protocols, accepted behaviors. You might call it new office etiquette. You know, so you need to, you really need to look at this holistically, all of it together. Um, it's really very possible. It involves um, various analyses. So, you know, as with any strategy, you'd start off with going, this is where we are, this is where we want to be. Um, you you'd do an analysis of your people side of things, your teams, your functionalities, um, your, your headcount numbers. Um, that would then help to inform your, your place, your settings, your numbers of desks, your, your um, numbers of other areas, your sort of space budget. Um, you then also look at your existing space. Can it work for these new needs? Do we maybe need to look somewhere else? Do we maybe need to expand or we can get rid of some space? Um, and then the processes, how are you actually gonna make this all work together? So it's quite a holistic process. Um, it's a system, as I said, um, but it's absolutely doable. It's been done many times before. Um, and it can really be a fantastic, empowering way to, to look at your workplace, to understand your workplace dynamics, and to really get the best out of your workplace, to really make it work for you, uh, for your organization, for your people um, on every level. Oh, so to focus uh, a little bit more on the process, I'm going to hand over to you, Han. <laughs> yeah, and I wanted to say that um, what's cool about what we can see is that it's adaptable, right? It's an approach. So it's not you need this, this, and this, and you need these 20 things, and you need, so whether the organization is small or big, it's applicable to you. I, th I think it's, that's what comes 
comes across from my point of view is that you know it is it is it is uh, relevant to to all types of organizations um and uh, and what i'll do quickly is let me take over the screen sharing quickly i just uh, want to see if can you uh, maybe stop sharing and then i will i'll yeah. over the sharing there we go um what i'll do here is um um, I'm going to be a little bit demanding as well, but just just by also saying that um, that I haven't seen any questions. Um, uh, so I've, I, I did look at the look at the question uh, list, um, and there was zero. So <laughs> I want to invite people to answer to 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 to, to ask some questions, um, and then at the end we'll see what we can uh, what we can answer. We'll probably answer a couple of questions. That'd be great to to do that. So please go ahead and, and, and go to the Q&A section and ask a couple of questions. Um, and then um, before I get going, um, I think let me also uh, kick off a poll. So if everybody can look, can look on the screen, um, I'm going to activate one now for, uh, for uh, from a workspace management solution. So please look on your screen, it should kick off now. Are you using a workspace management solution? So are you currently using a workspace management technology solution or a platform where employees and people can book meeting rooms, desks, collaborative spaces? So it's so in other words, a system that, that, you, that you can uh, book different kinds of spaces. Um, are you using that? Have you been using it? Even if it's new, um, it'll be interesting to see how many people do have a type of technology that'll help them, uh, that helps with them around their workspace management activities. And I can really see the answers coming in. <laughs> this is very cool. We can see in the background. Yeah, yeah. As people are voting, the, yeah. the numbers are going up and down. Yeah, I thought of doing that because you can actually see it like, a, like an organism as people uh, answer questions and as they, as they do that. So um, it seems like you kind of paused there. So yes, uh, so 10% um, are using a solution. Uh, 57 are using Outlook as a solution and 33 uh, are not uh, using anything. Let me just go, uh, yep, okay, so that's, it's already sharing the results, so that's excellent. Okay, so there is a lot of Outlook users out there, but also a lot, a lot of people not, use, not using anything, you know, so, so not, not having anything. So um, let me close this. I think that's very insightful also for me um, to, to see. To, to gauge where we are, and uh, I think it's my expectation uh, around what I expected, around the 30 30 percent uh, people not using anything, 50 50 odd percent using an Outlook solution, uh, which will take me into into the next uh, section. So, what do we do to make it work, Georgie? <laughs> what do we need to make activity based working work? Um, I, I also I saw your your people place. Um, and, and process that last slide, and I'm, I'm actually carrying on from there because I think that those are the, the, the success factors in a couple of technology. Technology enables that. So what do we need to make this work? Whether you're a small organization, a big organization, um, what, what do we need uh, to make it work? We need technology. Um, uh, technology helps uh, support these three areas in the workplace. So these, these, uh, uh, these three areas are vital uh, to be supported uh, by technology. So technology needs to support for activity-based working. Technology has to support the employee. Uh, I think that is probably the, the biggest point. Well, I think all three are gonna be fairly, fairly important points. The second area is technology needs to support the workplace and the place and technology needs to support business and processes and processes. So these are the, the, the topics I want to talk through um, and, and, and go through for, uh, for, for you know, with it. First is the employee, the people. So, so how much productivity time or how much productive time do you think is lost daily, potentially, for, by people looking for meeting rooms, looking for workspaces? And also think about the frustration behind that. Um, as people adopt activity-based working, you can imagine um, this, this is probably going to increase without a technology or without a way to, 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 to ensure you've got an efficient way of, of doing things uh, in the workspace. 
Um, otherwise, you're going to, I mean, you, could, you might end up with five different types of activity areas, but you want people to be able to, you want the employees to be able to, to, to use them and to find them and to utilize them. And then you want visibility. So it's about the employee. There's a global trend, um, a repeatable global trend, also 2019, that showed that 40% of employees spend up to three weeks a year searching for meeting rooms. Um, I was quite uh, surprised when I saw this myself, um, but, uh, but you can imagine the productive time lost. And it's easy to imagine. Um, have you ever walked into a meeting room, for example? I'm sure most, it probably has happened to most of us. Have you ever walked into a meeting room only to find that there's already someone in there? And you, you end up opening the door and uh, there's a bunch of people staring at you, um, you know, putting you on the spot. And odds are, because it's a meeting room, uh, you have people with you, one or two, or even more people with you, and you're left a little bit embarrassed, but also frustrated because now you've immediately seen the time has been wasted. Um, and then you're having to find another meeting room. So this leaves you uh, leaving that room, uh, you know, running, running around the office or going, going through the floor looking for another meeting space. Um, because it won't make sense to go back to your desk and try and find something on, on your Outlook, as 55% of the people say, say they use. Um, it does help when you're in front of your computer, uh, but uh, yeah, you, you end up uh, trying to find another space. Then um, also, even worse, you might end up having to reschedule that meeting. That's happened to me. I've been in a few meetings. Um, I've, I've spent time a half an hour uh, as a guest uh, trying to, you know, waiting for people to try and find meeting rooms. So that, that time easily adds up very quickly um, if you're a person that goes to meetings. Another scenario is imagine that you have just grabbed a co coffee in the office, you went to your coffee area, you grabbed a nice cappuccino or something with a colleague or two, um, and you've just realized, listen, we in, we're actually discussing something important now. We need a collaborative space uh, to continue our discussion, maybe even a private space. Um, and so, uh, now you've got to go back to your desk and to check your, 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 your booking methods to try and find something um, or walk the floor and try and find something um, if there's no, no, no way to do that. Um, so, so in these two examples, um, although it can also be frustrating, very frustrating in these scenarios uh, to, to encounter these, these, type, these two examples, um, you can imagine um, just think about your number of employees um, and the potential reductive time lost on a daily basis or a monthly basis by these two uh, instances occurring. So just think about your number of employees and what that, that uh, productive time lost could mean. Um, and your tensions were peer, you've, you've got nice working uh, areas, but it's difficult for, for people to access them, right? To, to find uh, spaces. And that's where technology or workspace management technology comes in. Um, workspace management technology um, can put visibility and flexibility as well as control into the palm of the hand of the employee. So we're focusing on the employee at the moment, the people. So imagine what you want to do in activity basis. You want to put flexibility and access and control in the palm of the employee, wherever they are. They might even be outside the building. They might be on their way somewhere or working remotely, you want to put access in, you want to put access, you know, that, that solution of visibility in the palm of the employee, which reduces the frustration. But more importantly, it will increase their productivity. Okay, so that's, that's a, an important point about the employee. The second area which technology has to support in this type of workspace approach um, with activity-based working and even the new way of work is, is you have to support the workplace or the place as well. Technology has to support the workplace, so it has to be relevant to the workplace, right? Um, and also the changes in your workspace. So, so with technology and activity-based working, it is possible to reduce your required office footprint, as an example, to, but dependent on your organizational requirements. Technology supports and technology should support uh, workspace design, and workspace readiness and workspace planning. So it ensures the design and it's ready for people and you can plan based on, it, you know, based on the information, information you get from the technology. Um, those are, are, are important points. I want to mention 
couple of examples before activity-based working or uh, before, I, you know, I dare I even say before COVID, you know, so uh, what happened was you might have had a thousand workstations for a thousand people, right? But now with activity-based working and the new way of work, you might only in some cases need 500 workstations for a thousand employees. And uh, so think about that potential cost saving that you can achieve by implementing this type of workspace approach. Um, but can you imagine a thousand people, the flip side also a little bit, so can you imagine a thousand people arriving on a Monday with only 500 worksta workstations being available? Um, that can be chaotic, that can cause, uh, can you imagine the chaos? Uh, can you also imagine a workspace that appears to be available on a system when you get there, oh, gee, it's actually in use. So, um, so this is why workspace technology solutions is so important because it helps you, so to, to help you manage which workspaces are available. So it helps you actually ensure that works and certain workspaces are available at certain times when people need it. Um, and then the key is when people need it, that is very important. And to enable employees to plan when they need to come into the office or that specific activity area. When they need to go there, they can plan accordingly because they're supported by technology and, and that supports um, their, 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 their working activities. Uh, another way to do things is by deploying with technology. You can deploy sensors uh, to show people workspaces that are available versus in use. So workspaces that are actually in use versus, versus free. And uh, this leads me to the next critical point, which uh, is the business of the brain. Before you move on, Johanna, I want to just add a quick little maybe tidbit that's useful. Um, yes. With you know sharing desks and booking desks to come in, um, it's a it's a fantastic way to be more efficient with your space. Um, but studies have shown that hot desking, if managed badly, can really have detrimental effects on the business. So, in having a booking system, as you're saying, like giving people a view of where they're going to sit, who they're going to sit with, um, how it's going to work. That yes. removes a lot of the anxiety and the unfamiliarity that, that is affecting people's ability to be productive. Um, so it's really important if you're looking at, at, at using um, more flexible um, workplaces and, and shared desks, um, it really makes a difference to, to be able to have that view and allow employees um, put, put the decisions in their hands to plan. Yeah, because they can do so. They're used to planning the meetings, the meeting rooms, hopefully booking those rooms, following processes. Having said that, you can imagine having an open plan area with you used to have, let's say, 400 desks. Now you've got 200. Uh, uh, and, you know, you imagine there's no process. You just tell the people it's there when you need to come in. I mean, that'll be uh, a big risk, and, and and like you said, it'll put people uh, in, 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 in in a difficult position when they get to the office. Um, and because the, 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 the third flows into that, it's about the process. So you've had process there, and, and I, I like to call it business and process, because technology supports business by enabling activity-based working approaches to be process-driven, to streamline business activities, as well as those processes. Because you want to streamline business activities, and you, you have to do that through a specific process, but a process that is that's, got, that's, that's supported by employees and that's also user friendly. I'll, I'll, co I'll cover that in a little bit more time. But the secondly, second point I wanted to mention is also technology should help provide insights to help business make the right decisions. And that's the key, not just to make decisions, but make the right decisions based on data, based on information, and, and also based on, on activities. You see some customers, and surprisingly more, more than you think, um, uh, come to us sometimes and, and, and they, they are facing certain challenges, saying that they don't know where the workspaces that they have are fit for, per, for business purpose. So to your point, Georgie, do we have the right type of workspaces, for example? Secondly, are they the right size? Um, they ask questions like, do we have enough meeting rooms? I mean, can you, so those are fairly basic, but don't, it's, asked, it's really asked a lot. Do we have enough meeting rooms? Um, are the meeting rooms the right size? For our, uh, for our need? Is our desk office space sufficient to support our employees at work? So is the desk office space sufficient? And for, from a real estate point of view, um, people often ask, do we need more office space? Do we need another floor? Do we need another building? Do we need more office space? 
or should we just use our existing office space better? And, and I think people will be shocked sometimes by finding out if you use your, your existing office space better, not only do you improve, you improve your efficiencies in the bottom line, but you often some, you, you end up by having, uh, a, a, you know, you needing less office space than you thought you would um, based on your organizational requirements and needs. But, but um, workspace technology today provides business with, 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 with these vital insights. So having the technology, you get insights and visibility into, into, into these type of insights to help you make, make your correct, uh, your right decisions. Examples of this is by having sensors in the ceiling, for example, in a meeting room, or having sensors above a, a, a desk area. Uh, you can determine the, the, the trends of utilization of those various type of spaces, when they are used, how often they use, and even to what extent, so the percentage of the occupancy. You know, do you only do you always have two people in a 20 seater meeting room or two people in a six seater always? Or do you find that most of your occupancy is four people, so you need more four seats? So those type of um, uh, insights are made, made available to you. And, and it also shows you how many people you have in those spaces. Booking platforms is an example. Um, you know, dare I say so, booking platforms in addition to Outlook or working with, with Outlook um, will show you how often spaces are booked which spaces are the most popular, that's vital in information, and, and then also which spaces are underutilized or never utilized. And I, and I say that's important because, um, uh, Georgie, I think yeah, we, discovered, we, we, dis we discussed this early in the week, um, is that an approach like activity-based working is a journey, it's not a destination. So you don't implement workspace management on a Monday and that's it, you've done it. It's a journey. So in other words, it evolves with your organizational insights and your, your requirements and your needs, and technology supports that. Then these solutions enable business ultimately to have to make the right decisions, as I said, ultimately having the outcome that technology supports an activity-based working and the new way of work. Um, I also feel that uh, the, the next slide I felt I had to in include because, uh, because of what I've heard in dealing with, with customers, real estate managers, with head of real estates, and and a lot of people who are looking for simple ways to adopt technology or simple ways to drive the new way of work in their organization. How can we make it simple for employees while ensuring an effective workspace experience and insights and data? So because workspace booking um, is becoming so important and so critical, uh, what you find is you find this policy being rolled out and being adopted. I don't know how many of you have thought about this. Uh, sometimes when I, when, I, when I mention this to people, a, a kind of a penny drops and they think, yes, that makes sense. That's actually what we want to do. Or that is critical. And that is no booking, no office work. The policy, no booking, no office work, implies that if you don't, if you don't make a booking of some sort, you can't really or should not really come into the office. Reason being, if you need a desk to go sit at, due to the reasons we mentioned before, you want to make sure that when you get to the office, there's a desk for you, but that also that there's the right desk for you. Do you need a private desk, a quiet desk, or a quiet room, or a phone booth area where you're going to make lots of calls? Do you need a presentation screen? Do you need an open plan that doesn't matter? You'll sit with other people. Uh, so what type of workspace? So by booking a space, the employee knows he's got this space reserved for him, also the type of space that he needs. And then also it ensures workspace readiness that I mentioned under business. You can ensure that that workspace type is ready for the people. You can have insights because now you know what type of workspaces are used. And some people also add sensors into the mix, as I, as I mentioned before. Because on the one side, you've got booking of spaces, and if people don't arrive for a booking, what the technology can do is it can uh, let go of that booking. So it can auto bump or let go of that booking, but ultimately also the census shows you how many people actually arrive in which type of spaces. So combining that policy, no booking, no office work, ensures workspace readiness, a good user employee experience, but also worth mentioning um, that by you, with technology, you can design your technology around your, your business rules and your policies. So, and your policy. So what happens is just by booking a room, 
people know that they follow 10 of your policies and procedures already because uh, you know if you don't follow the booking process then you can't get the space so it's an easy way for for you to maintain or to make sure that your your, your policies and procedures are implemented so one more let me just show you this slide before i show you some technology before i go into a demo and that is that prop tech globally has identified four key elements for technology to support a superior employee experience you need a good employee experience um, otherwise there won't be adoption and it won't be efficient and so those four key elements that needs to be merged and that, need, that cannot be overlooked is integration firstly so integrate integrating into existing business systems georgie mentioned before and it's something that i talk about often ecosystem uh, it's about the ecosystem at work and i'll touch base on that again on the last point next is taking into, into account the entire office space works the different types of workspaces the tasks employees do daily tasks and then draw data from various uh, interfaces and, 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 and sensors and things so to, to, to get a holistic picture and image. So without any further uh, you know, delay, let me, let me, t t let me go to a, to a quick view of, of an of a, of a example of workspace technology. This one is called MAPIC, um, a global a reputable solution uh, and, 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 and a workspace management platform um, with, with, with many customers from KPMG to Heineken, PwC, Microsoft. And, and, and so, so this is an example of what you can see on screen of a mobile experience, a web browser experience, data analytics, what is occupancy sensor or what a space sensor tracks. It tracks uh, you know, the type of utilization of spaces um, very effectively. So, so let, me, let me jump into, into showing you um, two things of that. So let me see, hopefully, Georgie, can you see my, uh, my mobile app on the screen or my mobile phone on the screen? Yes, I can. Excellent. That means everyone else can. <laughs> so this is an example. So you, you chat. Remember, I spoke about putting it in, putting this, putting technology in the palm of the of the employee. This is a mobile phone. You can log in. The employee can see their shifts for the week. They can see when they are uh, when they can come and uh, when they can book uh, book their their working spaces, and very user friendly, quick way. You can see. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. This person can only book these three days as an example. Um, and let's say they want to book Thursday. Oh, but wait, I've got a connection request. Okay, so this is just to show you what a connection request looks like. A connection request is a colleague because often you want to, I mean, we work together. We collaborate with people. We don't work in isolated silos. So if you want to, you, you, you want to, uh, uh, example, you want to connect with Michael and Ryan and Rebecca, you want to connect with these people, with these colleagues, and uh, the moment you connect it with him from now on, you can you can share calendars sort of. So you can quickly see that Ryan and, and, and Michael, you know, these people have booked on Thursday, and you can then therefore change your booking, which would have been on the sixth floor. You can change it to the customer experience sensor, sense, uh, customer experience area by just uh, you know changing it on the system quickly and going book. Now, obviously, what you've just done is. You've booked a workspace in the same area as your colleagues um, very quickly because it saw where they were, you know, where they were booked, and um, and it was as easy as that. So it takes you a couple of seconds potentially to book a workspace, and you're at the coffee area, you're walking in, you're at the lounge, and so forth. Lastly, uh, there's a lot I can show you, but for time's sake, I want to get to some Q and A's. Um, I'll show you a digital twin environment where we've got where, where you can plot your your office spaces digitally in, in, in the interactive floor plan, uh, having visibility of different floors, uh, different uh, re, you know uh, resource types, so you can see where all the different resources and places are, and you can also book whatever you need. So you can book you can you can find a place to meet, place to work. If you say I'm looking for a place to meet, you select that with a meeting room. Green is available, red is booked. You select green and you can see it's 16 seats. You can see a picture of the room. You can see the equipment in the room. You can check in. Um, and another way of doing it is you can go to booking, adding a booking, and you can say, you know, I'm looking for, for a workspace uh, from 12 to one o'clock and I'm looking for something on Tuesday and the system will search for a space available based on the number of seats that you need and showing you the spaces are available and you can book it 
putting a meeting title in. I just put that. I just put that. So this is on the URL. You can make bookings on your mobile phone. And then the good news is integration into Outlook as well is, 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 is normally catered for in these types of technologies. So um, just, to, just to end the demo section, um, I want to also show you the other, just a quick view of other type of workspaces because of Georgie activity-based working. That's what we're discussing. So these, so these are activities that you that you that you need to do that you need to book spaces for. As an example, office, hot office, focus rooms, collaborative rooms, phone booths, short stay rooms, fixed desks, focus desks, flexi desks, and whatever you select, the system knows that's the resource you need. This area only has one out of seven available, so be be, be aware of that. This one's got three out of seven, and then it'll, it, the system will show you uh, in this example what it looks like, and then even show you your route. So right, if you click there from the left, from the left you go left, and that's the area that you that you that you that you're looking. So so that's that's a, 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 an example of your mobile URL also integrated in Outlook. Um, Type of uh, workspace uh, workspace experience. Um, that's an interactive. That's the demo portion of what I wanted to show you. Of course, we can, we can spend quite a lot of time on, on a demo, uh, but I wanted to show you any examples of that. Um, and then say, uh, you know, let's let's look at some questions. Um, thank you very much for everyone for, to everyone joining. Um, I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll put our contact details on onto the screen. I hope you can see that. Please reach out to us if you have, have any questions, uh, if you need any, any assistance, uh, please. Uh, yeah, that cool. Up. We do have a couple of nice questions. Um, and I see we're going a little bit over time. So apologies, our audience. Um, if we don't get through the questions now, uh, we'll mail you with, with some responses. Um, I see Nikki Kimberg has asked a question. What is the name of a workplace that supports activity-based working? I call it an agile workplace. Is there a consensus on that? So I think the question is around um, the difference between activity-based workspaces and agile workspaces. Um, I would say, yeah, Johan, you might have an opinion on this too. This is very much a, agile for me comes from the tech industry um, and it's a lot more teams-based um, and there's a lot more sort of streamlining of people close to their Kanban boards yeah. and their speeds yeah. and their, um, there's, a, there's a sort of set of tools and a, a set of a sort of set up or sort of standard template uh, of your way of working that applies to Agile, which works very well for, yeah. for that purpose. Um, I'd say activity-based working is, is much more broader and it includes more of a diversity of settings. Um, and the focus is really more on empowering the individual within the workplace um, then that sort of team setup, which Agile seems to speak more to. Johan, you might have a thought on that. No, I agree. I mean, uh, Agile working is, 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 I mean, that's what we're talking about. I totally agree with you because it's all about, it's, I, I'm always going to be cheeky and say it's an activity-based workspace, you know, because it's, it's really centered around the activity that, 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 that's needed by the employee, which is an Agile approach, right? Because every organization is different. Every building might be different. And that's why I say it's a, it's a journey, it's not a destination. It's something you start and you grow into and it evolves around you and your, your, organization, become, your organization becomes more efficient as time goes by. And, and it's very, yeah, that holistic, it's the entire ecosystem that you're looking at of the workplace. Place yeah, people I mean, process together. Do you want to pick up another question, Johanna? I don't no, know if you've yeah, got a chance I, to look. Yeah, so, so, I've got, so, so does technology that you demo integrate into Office 365 um, in, in, in the workspace? So um, typically, yes. Uh, this, this solution that I showed, for example, does integrate into your Office uh, 365 or your, your Outlook calendar. Um, and, and what's important is that integration component that, that I mentioned. So, so often, um, you know, you want, well, you want people to be able to book uh, a resource from Outlook, or you want them to be able to book it from a, from a different uh, platform like your mobile app um, or your uh, or your your URL. Yeah, I, 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 I'll also throw another question in because I often get a question about the complexities involved about implementing a activity based um, you know strategy and even the technology. Um, and Georgie, you can jump in, but it's really on your. Is it yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So, so 
activity-based working, it's definitely, I would say, if you look at your total uh, ROI, uh, return on investment, um, return on investment far covers any cost that you would, um, you know, that you would invest into technology. And similarly for the workspace design, I would imagine. So your your output far outweighs what you invest. Um, so so I would say the biggest cost really. It's a bit of an interesting question, but the biggest cost would be the buy-in of the employee and and the support of management. You know, so making sure that that it's adopted and what the result will be: major return on investment, through cost saving, reduction of real estate, most likely, um, and and those um, you know that those returns far outweigh the cost. And yeah, so that's one. I don't know if there's. And yeah, just to build on, sorry, just to build on that, it's it's an investment in a process. So it's effectively a, a form of change management that you might be engaging in. So you might look at it as a change project. Um, and there's the strategic part of it. There's an implementation part of it, and then there's the the end, the um, the looking back, reflecting, you know, sitting that, coming back to the um, the baselines and things. So. Part of the process is definitely about this measurability, looking at actually finding metrics within the workplace that you want to track for improvement and, and tracking them. Um, so it really sets you up to be a little hard and the investment is a drop in the ocean of what, what the returns can be. So uh, there's a little other question. Okay, let's do one more if you want it, because I know the time is we've run over. Did you see another question? Uh, cool, yeah. You can pick. There's a few. Johan, you pick one. <laughs> yeah, I think. I think because of time, I think we need to probably, probably, probably end it here. I think we can keep going on questions for quite a bit. I just want to be mindful of people's time. So, um, you know, thank you. For, say from my from my side, thank you very much um, for joining this webinar. Those those people who are, who are still online, and, you know, and, and to those who might be watching a video later, you know, thank you very much for for joining the session. It was great. To, to do this and Georgie uh, it was great to to hear you know more about activity based working from your side yeah thanks Johan thanks everyone I hope this has really helped to shed some light on what was perhaps a little bit of a dark place before or unknown um, we will respond to the rest of these questions on email and if you've got any other questions please feel free to get in touch with us um, I'm always happy to talk about yeah. this and just create more awareness on these wonderful possibilities Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Georgie, and have a good day.